Welcome back. Now I'd like to show you how to convert a word equation into a balanced chemical equation like we did on the chapter 7 test. We're taking one question from the test, question number two, and the ver reverse reaction of another question from the test, question number four. We're going to do these examples together, and hopefully you can achieve the skill of being able to write a balanced chemical equation. This sheet might come in handy. It's a sheet of notes from chapter 7 on the simple steps to writing a balanced chemical equation. But you will also need your periodic table and a list of common polyatomic ions. Before we can balance the chemical equation, we need to have the chemical equation written out in the form of symbols. The first one says mercury oxide can be heated to yield mercury and oxygen gas. Because we start with mercury oxide and then we cause it to go through a change, mercury oxide is our reactant. The symbol for mercury on your periodic table is Hg, and I'll highlight it for you. It's right there, oh, right there, mercury, Hg. So I'll write that first. And oxide, remember when it's a single monoatomic element, we add that D, E ending. So oxide must be oxygen. And let's make sure that this is the correct ratio of mercury to oxygen in our formula. To figure that out, we can look at the charge of mercury, which because it's a transition metal is written as a Roman numeral that says 2 plus. And we'll look at the charge of oxygen. Because oxygen is in group 16 of the periodic table, its likeliest ion is going to be a 2 minus ion because it's most likely to gain 2 electrons. I should show that to you on here. So oxygen, group 16. Remember, noble gases have a valence of 8. Group 17 has a valence of 7. Group 16 has a valence of 6. And to get to 8, it would have to gain 2 electrons. When it gains two electrons, it would have a charge of negative two. So as an ion, oxygen is usually found um, as oxygen negative two charge. Positive two and negative two cancel each other out. So we know that this must be the right formula for mercury oxide. I'm going to go ahead and erase our charges. Can be heated to yield. This is simple. We can put in our yield sign to show that Mercury 2 oxide is our reactant and it forms whatever our product is, in this case mercury and oxygen gas. We already know the symbol for mercury and we also know the symbol for oxygen, but I want you to look at your chapter 7 description because there's a list of common diatomic molecules oxygen gas that we find in the air always comes in sets of two. So we need to call it O2 because that's what it will form. It will form mercury and sets of oxygen molecules, sets of oxygen atoms bonded, O2. Now let's balance it. On this side of the equation, we have do, 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 balance. We have one mercury atom, we have one oxygen atom, on this side we have one mercury atom, 
and two oxygen atoms. That's not balanced. Remember, we can only add coefficients in front of our symbols, our chemical symbols. And so, over here, we need to write a two to balance our oxygens. Now that we have two oxygens on both sides and two mercuries on this side, we need to write a two in front of mercury over here as well. As you can see on this side of the equation, we have two oxygens and we have two oxygens over here. We have two mercuries and we have two mercuries over here. Now it's balanced. Check. All right. And you can erase your work or you can keep your work on there. I'm going to erase it so it looks a little bit neater. And we'll go on. So here we see copper and oxygen combined to form copper oxide. On your periodic table, the symbol for copper is Cu. Right here. I see you. Or you see me rather, I actually don't really see you. Cu. As we know, oxygen, when found in the air, has a symbol of O2. So Cu and O2 combine to form copper oxide. Remember, when writing the symbols for our ionic compounds, we always start with the symbol for the positive ion first, and then we write our symbol for the negative ion, oxide. But we're not done. We have to look at charges before we're done writing this symbol. Now, copper's charge is given in the Roman numeral. It has a charge of 1 plus. And as we talked about up here, oxygen has a charge of 2 minus. 2 minus and 1 plus don't balance. So we need to have two copper ions for every oxygen ion. Now that we have our correct symbols, we can balance the equation. Right now, we only have one copper atom on this side of the equation, but we have two oxygen atoms. On this side, we have two copper atoms, but only one oxygen. Balancing our oxygen first, marker. Balancing our oxygen first, we need to write a coefficient of 2 in front of our copper oxide. That will change this to 4 coppers. 2 times 2 is 4. And now we'll have 2 oxygens. But we're still not balanced. Our oxygen is now balanced, which is good, but our copper is not. We need to write a 4 in front of our copper in order to have 4 copper atoms, 2 oxygen atoms, 4 copper atoms, and 2 oxygen atoms on that side. And that's your balanced chemical equation. I hope that made sense.